What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabe Gunther and I'm a photographer out of Salt Lake City, Utah. I've had a few people DM me on Instagram, which if you're not following already, it's at Gabe Gunther, uh, just asking about how I get the colors I get in my photos and how I go about editing photos in Lightroom. Uh, so today I'm going to go over just a brief introduction on Lightroom, some basic tools, stuff like that, and then kind of how I get the different colors I get in my photos. So without further ado, let's jump onto the computer behind me, open up Lightroom and get started. Now that we have Lightroom open on our computers or phones, I wanna go over one thing and that is shooting your photos in RAW. I recommend always shooting your photos in RAW because it gives you the most dynamic range and allows you to fix your photos if they're slightly darker or lighter than you intended. For example, this photo right here, you can see how I have some detail in the clouds and some detail in the shadows. If this was JPEG, I would not be able to bring any of that back. But because I shot in RAW for this particular photo, I'm able to increase those shadows while darkening those highlights to keep all of the details in this image without any grain. So if you wanna know how to shoot in RAW, most cameras, almost all cameras allow you to do that. However, you can also shoot in RAW on your iPhone. And in order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to open up your settings. Once you're in settings, scroll all the way down until you see camera. You're gonna click on camera and then go to formats. Turn on Apple Pro Raw and then go into your camera app. And at the top right, you can see that raw with a slash through it. Just tap on that and now you are able to shoot raw photos. Do be wary that raw photos will eat up a lot of space on your phone. So just keep that in mind, but you'll be able to get a lot more details out of your photos by doing so. Okay, now that we've gone over that, I wanna touch on all the different sliders and curves and color grading and all these over here. So let's start with exposure. Now exposure is going to increase or decrease the overall exposure of your image, as you can see here. Next is contrast. Contrast is going to brighten the highlights and darken the shadows, giving contrast into your image. Now if you want a flat image, as you can see here, you're gonna slide it all the way to the left and slide it to the right to get more contrast. Now, there's something to be said about overdoing it, so just be wary on all these different sliders. You can overdo them, so just keep that in mind. Next are highlights and whites. Now these are very similar to each other, but know that they're not the same and they do not behave quite the same. I heard somewhere that you're supposed to think less identical twins and just two cousins who look a hell of a lot like you. So highlights are going to control less of the lighter values than the whites do. So for example, the whites are really, really gonna blow out that top left of this image because that's the brightest part. Highlights are gonna do the same, but not quite as drastic as the whites do. The whites really boost that, and the highlights not as much. So that's highlights and whites. Next are shadows, and they're very similar to blacks. However, shadows are gonna control the darkest parts of the image and is used to boost underexposed areas of your image to bring contrast back into washed out images. So, all of these shadows in here, if you wanna bring back any of this information that was lost, the shadow slider is gonna do that for you. That's gonna bring back any dark parts of the image that you want. Keep in mind that this is not a JPEG, it's a DNG, so I'm not gonna have as much control as I would say on this one, like so. But it still works on JPEG. You just can't bring as much information back as you can on RAWs. Now, the next one is the black slider. The black slider affects the true blacks of an image, unlike the shadows that affect slightly less. If you wanna set the black point of your image, you're gonna use this. So say I want this little ravine down here to be the black point of my image. I will set this first, and that will give me my black point, and then the rest I can adjust with that. This will not affect the black point as much as this one did. So this will keep that black point as black as it is and lift the other dark tones. 
moving down to presence, you're gonna have texture, clarity, and dehaze. Texture, I never use, or if I do, it's very rare. All it does is add extra detail or texture to the image. So this is gonna work well on hair or other details in portraits, but I could also possibly see this being used in macro photography to get different details in your image um, on small objects. Next one down is clarity. This acts very similar to the texture slider and it works to boost a dramatic sky. So if you want your sky to be a little bit more dramatic, you can increase the clarity. However, don't overdo it because you're gonna get left with a very overdone image. <clears throat> the next one down is dehaze. Um, this slider does exactly what it says. <laughs> If you ever have an image that is fairly hazy, this slider is going to help reduce that so that you can see more of the image through the haze. I uh, use this very slightly on my images. However, again, don't overdo it or else you're going to get something like that and no one wants that. So if you move it over here, it's going to really haze up your image. If you move it over here, it's going to get rid of some of that haze. And I mean, it, it looks pretty good right here rather than before, but obviously it does not look great when it's all the way over there. So be careful with that one. Um, vibrancy and saturation are the next two. So vibrancy is the same as saturation. However, it only affects the less dominant colors. So the very dominant colors are gonna be more affected by the saturation rather than the vibrance. Both of these will affect colors, but just keep in mind the saturation is really going to affect those dominant colors in the image, such as these highlights. Um, you can just tell that these are very dominant. All these highlights already stand out and this just emphasizes that. Okay, moving down to the tone curve. So I think that this can be one of the most confusing things if you're new to Lightroom. Uh, I'm gonna put up a picture right now showing the different regions that are on the tone curve. So going off of that, if you want to increase brightness in the highlights, you're gonna first click on a line. So that's how you add points onto this like so, I'll add three. If you wanna increase these highlights, you're gonna to go to the highlight region and drag that up to increase it, like so, that's all the highlights increased, and drag down to darken those. So I'm gonna drag them up a little bit to increase them, okay? And then it's gonna work the same throughout. So these are more of your shadows down here. If you wanna deepen those shadows a little bit to create some more contrast, you're gonna drink you're gonna drag that down like so. Now this one on the end is going to fade any of those shadows. If you drag that up, it's going to really fade them. This image you can't tell too much. If I were to jump to something like this and really quickly add these three, if I drag this up, you can see how it's fading all these shadows. And that's, that's too much personally for me. I don't enjoy that but I like to add a slight fade so you can kind of see it's very slightly faded. So that's the tone curve. I don't touch too many of these. These are individual curves for the colors. Uh, I don't mess with them. I know some people do. That gets a little confusing to me, especially because I'm colorblind. So I just usually stick with the, uh, the default tone curve. Now moving down from this, this is the HSL slash color adjustments. Um, it's the same thing. It just lays it out differently. This goes through the colors with hue, saturation, and luminance under each color. This is just switched. It's going to have hue, saturation, and luminance with all the colors under each of those. I like to use it like this, or you can go to all and see all of them. Uh, so this is basically where people get their personal touch, like their flavor. Uh, so each person colors their images differently and I color mine differently than someone else would. So basically what hue does, uh, if you don't already know, hue is how much black or white is added to these individual colors down here. So for example, this has blue in here and up here. So this is going to, if I slide it here, whiten it up a little bit. If I slide it back, it's going to darken that. Now saturation is obviously how saturated each color is. So if you want really blue skies and blue water, you're gonna drag up this blue and that's really gonna saturate it. Same with greens, there's a lot of greens in this image. If 
you really want to saturate those greens, you can drag this up. This is basically the same as vibrance and saturation. However, this allows you to pinpoint individual colors. So say I wanted it increased, but see, I didn't want those greens quite as green as they are with this saturation. Well, then I can go down here and just move up those blues to get the blues, but keep the greens a little down. I could even darken the greens a little bit, take out some of that color in those greens if I wanted to. Okay, and then luminance. This is another one. Luminance is basically how bright each of these colors are. So if you want a really bright sky, drag that up. That's going to brighten that sky. If you want it dark, you can tell up here it's a little... I don't know how I feel about that, but that's going to darken it up up there. So you have to be careful with these. You can get some weird uh, stuff going on if you mess around too much with them. If you drag them every which way, it can get a little funky. So just be careful. But that is the HSL and color slider. Okay, moving down to color grading. I know this one can confuse quite a lot of people. Uh, it's fairly new, so I don't think a whole lot of people know about it. Basically what it is, in the old version of Lightroom, there was split toning, and this allowed you to add certain colors into the shadows and the highlights. All that color grading did was add midtones, which is great because it allows you to target skin colors. Generally, skin colors are in the midtones. So it's basically the same thing. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, so say I want a little bit of blue uh, let's go green a little bit of green in the shadows we're gonna click and we can drag this dot around the side if you hold shift see that line right there that's gonna lock it on that green so then you're able to add a little bit of green into those highlights or shadows sorry same thing with let me go back to here same thing with highlights if you want say we'll add a little bit of green into the highlights and drag that around hold shift that's going to add that green into the highlights for you. So this is a useful tool. It's a little bit less intimidating than you would think. It just allows you to add certain colors into highlight shadows and midtones. Um, blending is going to choose whether you want the color more towards the shadows or more towards the highlights. And balance is gonna allow you to balance those colors out. So I would just play around with that a little bit. I'm obviously not a pro at it. I honestly don't even use it for my uh, editing style, but it can be used if you want certain certain looks with your image. Moving down to detail. So the default sharpening is set at 40. I don't touch sharpening too often. I generally keep it there because I like a little bit softer image, but I don't take it off. So I have a little bit of sharpening that's on there. I do, however, touch the noise reduction. I'll turn this up to about 25 somewhere in the 20s and that just adds the slightest amount of just softness to the image so I always mess with that unless I'm doing some sort of image where I don't want it to look soft I want it super sharp then I would take that off add some sharpness maybe even add some clarity and a little bit more dehaze than I would um, so those are those two I don't ever touch anything down here color detail smoothness none of that I'm not quite sure what any of that does to be honest lens corrections it looks like it automatically enabled them I usually don't turn them on just because it adds a little bit darker mood to the lens than what it would if I turn them on basically what lens correction does is it fixes any weird issues that might be related to the lens you're using this won't be a problem if you're shooting on an iPhone but if you're shooting on a DSLR mirrorless something like that it's going to correct any weird things and automatically detects your lens so for this image I use a Sigma 35 millimeter so it knows what kind of issues that lens might have and it fixes those for you so you can tell it it definitely darkens the image there's some vignetting going on with this uh, lens so if you don't want that at all turn that off it might actually be good to turn this one on in this case transform is going to basically this allows you to transform your image I don't ever really use any of this sometimes I do when I'm shooting buildings and I kind of want um, to adjust the buildings just so the lines are linear um, so I don't have any weird you know lines that are going to a point towards the top it lets me kind of stretch it a little bit 
so that's what all these settings do. I don't usually mess with it too much, but they're there if you need them. Down at the effects tab, you have vignetting. So you can turn on some light vignetting or dark vignetting, which is traditional vignetting. Um, I don't use this. I would much rather use the uh, radiant tool, radio filter, and I drag that like so, nice and big, bring it down so I have a little bit of room down here, and then I just darken this up a little bit so it doesn't add any weird um, vignetting up in the sky. I want the sky to stay white with most images and then I can darken up this. If there's an image where it's dark up here too, there's no sky, then yeah, I'll throw on a vignette, but I use this 99% of the time to put my vignettes on the bottom. Moving down towards grain, I don't like to add grain into my images, but I know some college girls love their grain with their warm, bright photos. So if you want to add any of that, you can throw in some grain. Let me zoom in. This is a little bit overdone, but you can totally tell that there's a lot of grain in this image. So if you're a fan of grain, making your pictures look a little older, you can definitely mess with that. This will increase the size of each individual piece of grain. So if you want large pieces of grain like this, go for that. But uh, that's the grain right there. Next and the last one down is calibration. This just fixes any issues that you might have with your camera. If there's cameras that are calibrated to certain types of settings. You can fix it through this. I don't touch it. I know some people like to use this a lot to manipulate their images. I don't ever really mess with it. It adds slight tints into the shadows. As you can see here, green or more of a blue tint into the shadows. It's kind of like a form of split toning. So you can do that if you'd like. There's also red primaries, so you can adjust those reds, which looks like it affects the greens as well as the saturation of them. Again, I don't mess with this, so I'm not the one to take any pointers from, but that's calibration. Uh, up here, we have the crop. So this allows you to crop your image. If you're posting on Instagram, the largest image they'll let you post is a four by five. So I always apply that like so. Next one over is a spot removal. I don't use this one, I don't like it. I would much rather use Photoshop spot removal. Um, so I always import them into Photoshop afterwards just to remove anything like maybe some distractions in the water down here. Next one over is red eye correction. I don't shoot with a flash so I don't need to correct red eye. Next one up here is graduated filter. This allows you to say I want some more focus on this bridge and less focus down here can drag up this filter right here and what it does is it splits so this is one half of it and this is not affected by anything and this is where all these adjustments are going to happen so as you can see the exposure is increased right now but if i want to add some focus to this bridge what i want to do is drop this exposure and that's going to just kind of draw people's eyes up here and that's a really basic tool to use if you just want to darken something out that might be can uh might be distracting down here you can add one of these or you can add the uh, radio filter like i did before and uh, darken that up like so to just uh, remove distractions kind of put focus down there obviously this isn't the best editing right now because i'm doing it quick but that's something to do also a uh, really quick tip say you want to darken everything but this bridge you want the bridge light and everything else around it dark first you're going to darken everything like so i'm going to invert it so this is dark and you're going to turn on a luminance mask and what luminance is is brightness so this bridge is brighter than everything around it so if you drag from this right side it's going to remove it's basically going to mask this bridge out right so it's saying that you'd want the range to exclude the brightest parts but keep the dark ones. So what this does is it just does a quick mask based on darkness and lightness. So you can use this to like I did here maybe make this bridge pop a little bit and darken up all the trees behind it uh, or you can darken this. If you want to darken your subject and keep everything light, you can use that. And I think that's a really handy thing to have. Uh, and I use it on some quick 
subjects or anything like that. The brush is another useful one. If you want to get a little bit more meticulative about it, you can color it like so, and then brighten it or darken certain things. I use this for subjects sometimes. I'll color around a subject like this bridge, or if there was a person, maybe down here, I don't know, on a boat or something, then I could color them in, and that would make them stand out a little bit. But that is that. Um, now let's just go quickly over an image that I will edit, uh, just to kind of how I edit my photos. Um, let's do let's do this bridge one, okay? So I'm gonna reset everything that I've done so far. So this is the image to start with. First thing I'll do is I'll see how the co the exposure is looking, and I honestly kind of like it right here, even though it's gonna get a little jumbled up later on. Um, and I do add a little bit of contrast, not too much, just like somewhere in the 20s. I always bring down the highlights so I can have some sky as well as the whites just to further enhance that. And then I'll bring up the shadows to get a little bit more detail in there. And now this is the basic thing that I'll do just to make my images already look better, at least for my style. I really like being able to see everything in an image, so I always... And I'll bring up the blacks a little bit too. Um, but I always darken the highlights and whites and brings up, bring up the shadows and blacks. Now texture, I don't touch. Clarity, I add about 22, maybe 19 or 18. Six, we'll do 16. And then I bring up a little bit of dehaze, maybe like 10. Now it looks a little bright to me, so I am going to bring down these blacks, I think. Maybe even negative and then maybe the whites up a tad and these shadows down a little bit like that. <clears throat> now I'm gonna have to probably mess with these a little bit because I'm gonna add a curve into here. I'll just add a basic S curve. Um, I sometimes do a curve like this up a little bit and then I'll drag that down. I'll just do this one. And a nice little U curve down here like so. So I'll add a curve like that from time to time. Um, but when you do that, you need to know that you're gonna probably have to increase your exposure again, like so. So this is what we're working with so far, just after those adjustments. This has no color or anything like that. Now going down to the HSL, actually let's go back up. I always drop down the vibrance and saturation just about to negative 10, just a little bit. Then I'll go down to the hues. I usually <clears throat> always bring down my greens and yellows. Um, I don't generally touch a whole lot. I do like the look of the blue down a little bit, so I'm gonna bring the aqua down as well. Um, saturation, I always desaturate my greens. I don't love bright greens, just more of my style to bring them down, as well as the yellows. Blues, uh, I'm not gonna desaturate too much. And then let's go to the luminance. Luminance, I usually bring up those aquas quite a bit. Um, the greens, I'll deepen a little bit more for that moody look. And then yellows, I'll drop down a little bit as well. Uh, this is just really basic, but if you're looking for that deep and moody feel, I like to go with this. If you like something different, um, that's totally up to you. All right, now that we have the image like this, um, I'm not gonna add too much with the color grading just because I don't usually do that. I could add a little bit of warmth into the shadows. Uh, so I might, mm, you have to be careful with this, just maybe very slightly. Uh, and then noise reduction, add a little bit of this. <clears throat> now I do have presets. Uh, that I have for sale online. If you want to check those out, they're in the description of my Instagram, at Gabe Gunther, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so they are down right here. So this is my default Moody preset. Obviously, it needs to be tweaked from what it is, but that's what I put on all of my photos and then tweak it from there if you want to check those out. Um, but for right now, we're going with this, just super basic. Uh, and I don't think I need to touch anything else. I am going to add a radial filter like I did before. And bring that exposure down. 
just to kind of draw our eyes up more towards that bridge. Uh, and then going to crop it for Instagram like so and that right there is our final image if you made it this far thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it hopefully this cleared up some confusion for all you guys that were DMing me on Instagram or just anyone that happened to find this video confused about Lightroom um, again, these tips are the same on the application version of Lightroom and on the computer version, so it should work on both platforms for any of you guys that use iPhones or computers. Uh, other than that, subscribe if you haven't already. It really motivates me to keep making more of these kind of videos. Comment if you have any questions or concerns and hit the bell icon to stay up to date for when I post the next video. I'll see you in the next one.